and Miguel Tejada, they have another shortstop that will make many, many all-star appearances in his future. Better look out. Pom Pom Pete's getting excited. Swing and a miss by Tejada. Tejada's home run off of Young Hyun Kim to tie the ball game last night came on that frisbee-like slider. We have seen very few right-handers even get good swings on that pitch, let alone hit it as hard as Tejada did. And he swung at a pitch there that was not a strike. He's in the hole. You know what, too, Bob? In the hitters that Kim faced last night, we take another look. Tejada's wild swing. The age hitters got some good swings against Kim last night. And we have not seen that. Inside off the corner from Randy Johnson. That's the hardest fastball Randy's thrown in this ballgame, 99 miles an hour. That's the thing that separates Randy from most major league pitchers. He gets into a jam, a situation where it looks like the opposition might break through. He's got a little extra gas in that tank and can reach back and pop that ball an extra two or three or four miles an hour faster. Well, now goes Fall, and now the runners will be off with the 3-2 pitch with two outs. Signs, who doesn't run well, is at second. And Grieve will be off at first. And the Oakland fans getting into it here. How patient will Tejada be if that slider's down and in? Will it be a fastball? Will he be swinging? Chances yeah, are he will be. If I was a guest hitter, I'd have to guess slider right here. And it was down low, and they're loaded up. First walk by Johnson. Well, the reason I say a slider on that 3-2 pitch, Tejada is an aggressive swinger up there at the plate, and Matt Stairs looked completely overmatched in his first at bat against Randy Johnson in this game. But coming into this game, Matt Stairs 6 for 10 against Randy Johnson in his career. These A's fans have been noisy the entire series when their team mounts a threat. They're making some noise right here. And there's a strike on the outside corner from Johnson. He gets ahead. All this with two outs after the back-to-back -back strikeouts of Velarde. And Jason Giambi, the hit by Sainz, a base hit by Grave, and the walk to Tejada. And the bench protecting their two-run lead at the moment. Outside with a pitch, one and one. It's over in St. Louis. The Cardinals beat the Giants 8-7. Snapping a San Francisco eight-game winning streak. Too. Big numbers with the bases loaded in his career for Matt Stairs. Seven grand slam home runs, the 375 batting average. Johnson needs to throw a strike. He does, two and two now. Same pitch as that first one he delivered to Stairs. out of the base runners. And a base up to center. Going to tie it up. The other runner going to third. And this is a 2-2 game. On the base hit by Stairs to center. All this with two outs. Two-two count. Johnson goes to the slider. He catches too much plate with it. Stairs lines it right back up the middle of the field. A little confusion at the end of the play. Randy Johnson does not go behind home plate to back up the potential throw to the plate. Steve Finley uncorked the throw, and Travis Lee was late getting there as a cutoff man. You see him stumbling as Tejada goes behind the picture there and advances to third base. Now the batter, Ramon Hernandez. So the A's have caught up. 
And that has been their game here in this series. Catch up. And then go on to win. Big swing and a miss. Wild swing and a miss by Hernandez. Well, Matt Stairs over there at first base won't make anybody forget Ricky Henderson here in Oakland, but he has been successful. Three out of four stolen base attempts. Kind of lulls that opposing pitcher to sleep, and if you don't pay any attention to him, he will get a jump and try to steal a base. Two balls and a strike here. Well, it looked like it's going to be a very easy one, two, three inning for Johnson. Couple of strikeouts, but then signs a single. Grieve dumped a single to left. To out of walk, and then the two out, two ball, two strike single. And score two by stairs. And now the count goes to three and one here against Hernandez. Big pitch inning for Randy Johnson. No strike two. Fans react, but that looked like it was right down the heart of the plate. The key at bat this inning may have been the walk to Tejada. He got him. And Johnson strikes out the side, but the A's get back into it. Nine strikeouts for the big unit. The A's have tied it up at two. Well, it's time now for our K Pasa pop up quiz. If you think you know the answer, just log on to kpasa.com. You could win some great prizes. Name the four Oakland A's players who have led the American League in home runs. So there you go. There's your question. I gave some great clues last night to our question. I'm not going to give any today. I made them too easy. Well, the A's just caught the Diamondbacks with a two-run fourth inning. Diamondbacks will try and get back on top. Finley, Colburn, and Katai against Gil Heredia. Diamondbacks through the front four innings have stranded seven base runners. And Finley takes a strike. We're underway here in the fifth. Well, Greg, I was talking earlier in the ball game, right before Steve Finley made an out about that habit he has. He's going to do it again. We'll catch him next time. He bumps the heel of his hand up against his belt. I guess something he does just Kind of as uh, well, a comfort mechanism or something. Take his toe hold in that batter's box and you'll see him bump the heel of his hand up against his belt buckle and against the side of his hip. Here's Greg Colburn. Colby's got a hit. He's one for two. Already has given up seven hits in the game. Has not yet set the Diamondbacks down in order. And he throws outside here. Ball one. Well, two gut-wrenching, heartbreaking losses for the Diamondbacks the last two nights. Friday night, 5-4-11. to four and 11. Last night, 8-7 and 10 innings. And Heredia still has not set the side down in order as Colburn gets his second hit. And the eighth for the Diamondbacks. So Colby's two for two in the DH spot today. Two for three make that. And Heredia has yet to figure out Jason Conta. Who has singled and doubled. Both down the right field line. Both out of the reach of the first baseman Giambi. Who's going to bunt or at least showed bunt took a ball down low. Now 
Next time we'll be with you for Diamondbacks baseball will be next Thursday when Texas is at Bank One Ballpark. Low again, ball two. The yeah, Rangers are starting to make a move again in that American League Western Division race. Yeah, just as recently as about three weeks ago, only two games separated the four teams in that division. Texas suddenly dropped to nine games out, but now they've won their last five in a row. Seven and a half games out going into play today. Conte swings and misses as we take a look at the American League West. Everybody in that division's riding a winning streak. Seattle one in a row. This Oakland team two in a row. Anaheim three in a row. And as Bob said, Texas five in a row. And everybody at 500 or better. And everybody thinks they can win that division. There have been years in the past where it, at the All-Star break or shortly thereafter, teams start unloading potential free agents at season's end. And Texas has some of those guys that would be very attractive to teams in contention, but they still field there in contention so it's unlikely any of those teams are going to deal away any town if anything they may add players in the second half we're sure not hearing a lot of realignment talk anymore are we I think that might be dead in the water at least for the time being well, at least for the time being I, I think it was an, uh, an ill conceived plan the way it was initially drawn up and after some of the problems were pointed out, I think Bud Selig and the powers that be thought better of jumping into any immediate realignment, giving it a little more consideration for the long-term ramifications of any realignment, and uh, they're going to consider it a little more before making any moves. And the reason I bring that up is because the Diamondbacks were almost said and gone into the American Lake West before the season started. Conti, a liner that's caught by Velarde, back to first, and gets away. Colburn going to try for second. The throw down is not in time. It was almost a double play. It'll be an error on Velarde for allowing Counselor Colburn to go to second. Well, there's Velarde playing in the hole again with a left-handed batter at the plate and a runner on first. Velarde... Cheating over closer to the bag at first base, taking away some of that hole from Jason Conti. He hit the ball right to him. And in his hurry to try to double off Colburn at first base, he threw across the runner's shoulder over the head of Jason Giambi. And Colburn now in scoring position with two outs. So it's a line drive and an error. Now, Rick Peterson, the pitching coach, is going to sprint out here and talk to Heredia with Travis Lee coming to the plate. Lee has doubled and walked intentionally in this game. Travis Lee back in the second inning with an RBI double of his own down into the right field corner. Got a change up on the inside part of the plate. Hooked it down into that right field corner. And I'm sure the A's are out there on the mound right now discussing whether they would rather go after Travis Lee with a base open right here in this situation or go ahead and put him on base and go after the right-handed hitting Damian Miller. Last time they walked Lee intentionally. Miller hit it on the nose but right at Matt Stairs in right field for the out with the bases loaded. So we'll see what the A's strategy is going to be. And Hernandez is going to crouch, meaning they're going to only start pitching to Travis Lee. Maybe another one of those situations. It depends on the first pitch. If you get ahead in the count, you go ahead and try to put Travis Lee away. If you fall behind, you may go ahead and walk him intentionally. Maybe it falls behind, 1-0. Diamondbacks led 2 0. The A's just got two, and they're half of the fourth inning. Andy Johnson has struck out nine. And with the 12 men, he's retired through the front four. Lee fouls one back. One and one. Travis started the day hitting 231. Not much damage done with runners in scoring position and two outs. Going outside. Well, the Cardinals survived a five run giant eighth inning today. And posting that 8 7 victory. Hampton beat Hernandez. Veers finished up for the save. 
44,000 plus in St. Louis to watch the final game of that series. Two and two. So at the moment, the Giants three back. They started the day two and a half back. Of course, what happens with San Francisco? They'll either remain two and a half back or be three and a half back. And then what happens here with the Diamondback game? The Rockies, by the way, are playing a night game. As are, as is San Diego. Seattle is leading the Dodgers two nothing in the fourth inning in Seattle. Ooh, just missed inside. Full count now on the lead. And that road trip from Heck is coming up in late September, Bob, for the Diamondbacks. Three in L.A., five in San Francisco, and four in Colorado. They all pitch to Lee. He walked him. And that'll allow Miller to bat here with two on and two out. Travis walks for the second time. One of those non-intentional, intentional walks, it looked like. Yeah, after they fell behind on the first pitch, they didn't appear to be too willing to give Travis anything to hit. A borderline pitch on the 2-0 and o count didn't get the call. Now Damian Miller will have a chance to drive in a run with two outs. See his numbers with runners in scoring position, two outs. Damien is grounded a short line to right. Colburn and Lee, the base runners here. And Miller shoots one to right again. Now Stairs got an arm. They're waving Colby home. Here comes the throw. It's going to be in time, but Hernandez is knocked down, and Colburn gets to the plate. The throw was going to be there, but Hernandez couldn't come up with it. Colby knocked him over, and the Diamondbacks take the lead, and the runners advance to second and third. And the Diamondbacks have seen that happen to their catchers a couple of times. Perfect throw by Matt Stairs to Ramon Hernandez behind the plate. I think Hernandez heard footsteps, had plenty of time to catch that ball and still turn around and brace for the contact, but just dropped that perfect throw by Matt Stairs. Colburn blasts the catcher out of the way, has to go back and touch home plate. I don't think he hit it on his first attempt. When you saw the ball come into your picture, they're well ahead of Greg Colburn. It's ruled a base hit and an error on the catcher. No RBI. And Lee went on to third, down to second went Miller. Well, there's a guy that can attest to the difficulty of blocking home plate when the runner and the ball get there at the same time. Everybody remembers the 1970 All-Star game when Ray Fossey was bowled over in extra innings by Pete Rose in Cincinnati. I saw some interesting numbers on Ray Fossey. He was on his way to having a tremendous major league career as an offensive and defensive catcher. Before that collision with Pete Rose in the 70 All-Star game, he averaged one home run every 24 at bats. After that collision, one home run every 59 at bats. There's a ground ball foul. Yeah, that's that's tough. I, I realize Hernandez should have caught the ball. The throw was there. But you're right, you got that runner coming right at you. And, you know, as you said, Bob, footsteps. It's, uh, they're paid to catch the ball and make the tag, and Colburn paid to score a run, and he got it done. Now Council trying to get it done, and it's outside. I guess one way to look at that play is if it were a play at second base or third base with the same throw that much in advance at a runner at those bases, it would be ruled an error on the shortstop or the third baseman if they didn't hang on to the throw. I think that's the, yeah, the, the the thinking of the official score here. The throw was there well ahead of Greg Colburn at home plate. It was just a, an error by Hernandez to not catch the ball. Council into the air in the right field. Stairs goes back. He's got it. And the inning comes to an end, but the Diamondbacks recapture the lead.
They do saw in a couple of hits in air. We'll take a look going out. There's the collision. The Diamondbacks lead it now, 3-2. Well, let's open up those old doors to our Shamrock Farms Farm Team Report. Matt Williams, Zerubio Durazo on assignments, rehab assignments. Matt Williams played third last night for High Desert. He went three for four with a home run. And Arubio Durazo was a DH for the Sidewinders in Tucson. He went one for two with a double. And Matty with a long home run to center field and a couple of singles in that ball game, as you mentioned. Boy, if those two are back and healthy in the lineup for the Diamondbacks after the All-Star break. Wow. Here's Manikino to lead it off against Randy Johnson, who's got a lead back, 3-2. to two. Swing and a miss, strike one. Randy has struck out nine. He struck out two in the first three innings, two each in those innings, and struck out the side in the fourth. And outside, Alex Cabrera is a little further behind both Williams and Durazo as far as starting his rehab. He went out with a groin injury, remember? One ball, two strikes here. Menachino, the nine hitter in the A's lineup. He's tied it up in the fourth. Diamondbacks got to run back in the fifth. I know this much. The Diamondbacks will be glad to get out of Oakland the way this team comes at you. They were reeling when the Diamondbacks came in. They'd lost the three-game series to Texas. Had lost seven of eight. Randy Velarde had gotten upset with a number of his teammates. The Oakland second baseman, one of the veterans on this very young team, Art Howard, issued a clubhouse directive at the ball club after a loss. They weren't playing well. They just got two... Pretty inspiring victories for their ball club in the first two games of the series. They've got a lot of thunder in their lineup. They've got five guys in double digits in home runs led by Jason Giambi's 22. When we talked about their patience, their willingness to take a base on balls. They've had very good starting pitching this year. They're just a very dangerous ball club to play against. There's strike three. That's number 10 for the big unit. 13th time this year. Ten or more strikeouts in a game. And now that's number 138 in his career. Second only to Nolan Ryan. This is one of the few sliders he's thrown for a strike in this ball game and freezes Frank Menachino. That's a pitch that he usually throws down around the back ankle of the right-handed hitters and gets the swinging strike. This time he changes his sights a little bit and throws it for a strike. One out now. The batter will be Ryan Christensen, who has struck out twice. The only A's player who has not struck out today against Randy Johnson is Ben Greve. There's a bunt foul by Christensen. Not a bad idea, but he didn't get in fair territory. Ben Greve waiting his next trip to the plate. Hopefully it won't be for another inning or so. I'm talking on the radio side a couple of years ago when the Diamondbacks came in to play the A's. Ben Grieve and Travis Lee were the talk of baseball as far as what they were doing on a rookie scale. Grieve is at 300 this year. Travis has struggled. That was a strike to Christensen. Showing butt once again, but now with the two strike count. Their counsel says, I don't think he's going to butt with two strikes. I'm going to back way up behind the bag at third. In the right field, there is contact. He's got it, and that's out number two. And Christensen feeling a little better about himself after striking out the first two times. So two outs now. The batter will be Randy Velarde. <laughs> Sparks flying up here, Bob. Sparks are flying in the booth for crying out loud. Wow, I don't know what we did there, Greg, but I, I hope we I don't do it foot. again. I moved my foot there and uh, <laughs> bumped one of the electrical outlets underneath the table here, and I, I saw a flash. I thought somebody was taking a picture. <laughs> I did too. 
Two balls, no strikes here on Randy Velarde. That'll get your attention, won't it? <laughs> right underneath. <laughs> There's a ground ball foul. Well, this is an old building. <laughs> and there's a there's old Pom Pom Pete. I like Pom Pom Pete socks myself. He's got some really neat looking green knee socks. Go with that Oakland A's outfit. You know, there is a big time baseball fan. Oh, and he's been around for years and years. And we meet them all over the country, don't we? Oh, yeah. People who have been baseball fans for their particular team for a long, long time. That's down the line by Velarde. Conte over to get it. Velarde makes the turn, heads for second. And he is in with a double. Conte's got a good arm out there. And Velarde gets a double. It's 10th of the year. And he's in scoring position, representing the tie run with two out. Just down the line, fair and right. It may have been a closer play at second base. It looked like Conti stumbled a little bit as he got to the ball and did that reverse spin move to get the ball back into the infield. Velarde continues his hot hitting against the big unit. That ball just gets by Travis Lee. And if you watch the end of this play, Conti stumbles a little bit right there. He lost his footing momentarily, giving Velarde just enough time to slide in ahead of the throw. Velarde now 19 for 41 against Randy Johnson in his career. Now here's Jason Giambi. He is singled and he is struck out. Here come the A's again. That hit was the fifth of the day by Oakland. That's ball two. Andrew Martinez at the top of the list. Bernie Williams. Rodriguez Delgado and then Giambi. Caught by Bell and the inning's over. He was cheating back there. And that caught the break for the Diamondbacks. The inning's over. And that runner is stranded at second. We are halfway through a 3-2 Diamondbacks. It's time for our bank one home run jackpot inning. Joan Voorhees of Mesa is our contestant. She won $3,000 of mutual fund shares courtesy to One Group Bank One's mutual fund family. If a Diamondback hits a home run, I got a little home run story to tell you about. Scott Geyer was our director and director of broadcasting was reminding me and I had heard this at one time from Ken Phelps who sits in on some of our broadcasts on the radio side for the Diamondbacks makes his home in the Valley now but see I was saying that Ken Phelps back several years ago when he was in A's uniform 1990 we're told playing for this A's team here at the Coliseum broke up a perfect game by Seattle's Brian Holman in the ninth inning with two men out, it was a pinch hit home run. He really broke it up. There's a base hit by Womack to lead things off here in the sixth. How would that feel, huh? A perfect game with two outs in the ninth. And Phelpsy, Digger, as we like to call him, got the pinch hit home run to break everything up. Way to go, Digger. <laughs> Already it looks like he's right around the 20 pitch mark every inning of this ball game so far. Up over 100 pitches in the game. Well, they may be stalling for some time here. They have the bullpen up. I think T.J. Matthews is a man. This has not been a typical Gil Heredia outing in this ball game. I talked at the top of the show that last year he was number one in the American League in fewest pitches per batter. Was very efficient in the strike zone a lot. He's labored in this game, walking a couple of batters. An intentional walk to Travis Lee. Tony Womack's got three straight hits. He's three for four now in the ball game. And he is going to leave Heredia in there. Jay Bell at the plate. Jay's 0 for 3. Womack will draw a throw and get back. Tony has stolen 18 on the air. He's been caught six times. 
We talked about the Diamondbacks playing a lot of small ball in this series, stealing bases, bunning, squeeze bunning. This may be a chance to play a little hit and run with Jay Bell. Maybe open up some holes in that infield, try to get Jay untracked here before going into the All-Star break. Low ball one. There's also a situation where a guy like Womack creates havoc on the bases just by being on. It certainly draws his fair share of attention from the pitcher and the catcher changes the kind of pitches that a catcher might call. You're more apt to call for fastballs with a fast runner over there at first base. Bell hits one to third back to first double play. Hit it right on the nose but right at the third baseman Menachino who doesn't hesitate getting it over to Giambi for the twin killing. Man. Uh, Jay Bell snake bit. You can't hit the ball much harder than he does right here. Got a good fastball from the inside part of the plate. Right to Menachino at third base and good quickness on the part of Menachino who has been a middle infielder throughout his career. Getting that ball across to Giambi for the double play. So Heredia, who might have been on the ropes, now has two outs and nobody on, and the batter is Luis Gonzalez. When you saw that pitch count earlier, already already up over 100. There's a ground ball to second. Now it turns into a pretty quick inning. I hit double play. Nobody left. We'll go to the bottom of the six. Randy Johnson back to work. Three two Diamondbacks. Arizona Diamondbacks baseball is brought to you in part by Bank One, where Diamondbacks fans go to understand money management. Pepsi, the joy of cola. And by Infinity, official luxury vehicle of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Well, the East Bay, we're in Oakland. Diamondbacks and the A's going at it here at Network Associates Coliseum. As we move to the bottom of the six, Greg Schulte with Bob Brunley, 3-2 Diamondbacks on top. They have double the hit total of the A's but the Diamondbacks have stranded nine base runners. Randy Johnson back to work. He struck out ten through five innings and he faces signs Grieve and Tejada. This is a combination that got the A's are two runs. Most of their combination. We saw Gil Heredia last inning averaging right around 20 pitches per inning. Randy very solid with the exception of that fourth inning when the wheels fell off a little bit. Three base hits and a walk in the inning for the Oakland A's. In the air a lot of foul ground here. If Travis can get over there he might make the catch. Nope. Had to run a long way. And the ball hits. And then bounces into the seats. Balls two strikes on signs who has a hit he's one for two and a fan reached over the railing over there along that first base foul territory but Bruce Fremming the first base umpire felt that Travis Lee was not in a position to easily make that catch and the fan didn't really interfere or alter the play in any way you'll see a glove come out of the stands over there at the last minute it's a lot closer than yeah. it looked with the uh, with the naked eye I bet you Ground ball now hit to short. Tony Womack's got it. Go across in time. Signs out number one. The All-Star break after this game. The All-Star game on Tuesday, and then the Diamondbacks will resume action starting on Thursday at Bank One Ballpark, July 13th. It's an eight-game homestand. 7.05 game that particular night, that Thursday night against the Rangers. Three with the Rangers, three with Seattle, and two with St. Louis. And there's our new toll-free number to call for tickets. Hope to see you out of the ballpark. Pretty good teams coming into town. Texas, Seattle, and St. Louis. Very attractive teams to start the second half of the year. Brian Anderson, by the way, will get the call in the first game after the break for the Diamondbacks against Rick Kelly. Counts going three and zero here on Ben Grieve, who has a hit, one for two in the ball game. Realized last year after the All-Star break, the Diamondbacks won 51 and 17. 
Well, we touched upon that early in the ball game. Just an amazing winning percentage. When you talk about a ball club coming to the ballpark and hoping to win a game. Uh, that team last year in the second half, they came to the ballpark expecting to win every day. And more often than not, they did. Yep. There is ball four to Green. He's on with one out. Second walk given up by Randy Johnson. The other man he walked is walking to the plate right now. Miguel Tejada. And you're right, Greg. That was a big walk back in the fourth inning with a couple of runners on base. Matt Stairs waiting in the on-deck circle with two outs. Tejada showed uncharacteristic patience in taking the walk. Setting the table for Matt Stairs' two RBI single. Outside here, ball one. So the tying run on base here for the A's in this sixth inning. Shot to center, Finley has it for the out. And now there are two down and Here's Matt Stairs. Well, we mentioned back in the fourth inning after the walk to Tejada to load the bases. Stairs got a slider up and over the plate, lined it back up the middle of the field to drive home Almedo Signs and Ben Grieve. Tying the ball game at the time, the Diamondbacks came right back in the top of the fifth inning to score a run of their own, and they maintain that 3-2 to two lead right here. So Stairs and Johnson. Look at that. Seven for 12, a 583 batting average. With that many at bats, that's probably the highest batting average of Trey Johnson, I would think, right? I would think so. And Stairs is, has not been a good hitter against left handed pitching this year. He's not been a good hitter for average anyway, batting only 218 coming into play today. But much stronger against right handed pitching a 246 average with 12 homers as opposed to a 139 average with two homers against left handed pitching coming into play today. One ball one strike. All right. Well we have less than half the crowd that we had here last night. An all time record crowd in Oakland of better than 54,000 still a respectable crowd on a Sunday afternoon 25,000 516 watch this interleague battle ski right two two balls two strikes a one out walk to grave he's now at first with two men out Johnson against Stairs. High ball three. Now Gray will leave with two out and a 3 2 count. It's Ramon Hernandez on deck. And he's going to take a little time, pick up a little rosin. There he gets back on. Payoff pitch with the runner going, and it's steer right three call, and Stairs knew it. He was bending back. Johnson gets him for his 11th strikeout of the game. Tom's back in the seventh through six, three, two Diamondbacks. Three, two ball game. Diamondbacks lead as we move to the seventh inning. Of course, today, the final day before the All Star break, and we look ahead, Bobby, to the second half schedule. 62 of 74 games will be played against teams that are 500 or better. And look what the Diamondbacks have done against the better teams this season. Six games under 500. That is a tough second half. Yeah, they'll be tested right out of the shoot in the second half as well. We talked about that next homestand with the Texas Rangers coming in, Seattle Mariners, St. Louis Cardinals, and Cincinnati all on that list. Well, the Diamondbacks have done what they had to do in the first half of the season. They did not make the schedule. They played a lot of teams that were playing sub-500 ball early in the year, and they beat those teams. That's what you're supposed to do if you're going to be a postseason team. Now they're going to be challenged in the second half, and 
Ultimately, the best team will win the division. Steve Finley, Greg Colburn, Jason Conti against Heredia will swing at the first pitch and look to fly ball in a deep right center field. It could go. It will go. Home run to right center by Finley is 25th of the season. And the Diamondbacks have a two run lead. Dude, that's just a case of a veteran hitter being very smart. Heredia has taken in the latter part of this ball game to dropping in the slow curveball on the first pitch, getting strike one on the lefties. Steve Finley was laying in the weeds, waiting for it. Drives this ball out of here to straightaway center field for his 25th home run. Let's go into the play with a game plan in your mind, looking for that first pitch, getting what you're looking for, and taking care of it. So the day is over for the Oakland starter. They'll bring in Matthews, who is warming up in the last inning. Quite honestly, I'm surprised Matthews didn't start this inning. Already had thrown a lot of pitches, as we documented on the graphic last half inning. I'm surprised myself. Diamondbacks, a two-run lead. We'll take a break in the action and be right back. Four runs, three earned for Heredia. Now he'll give way, trailing 4-2 to two to right-hander T.J. Matthews. Pitching in his 32nd game of the season, the 2-2 two two record, no saves, a 5.92 ERA. The first batter he will face, Greg Colbrin. Colburn making like a linebacker bowling over Ramon Hernandez at the plate after Hernandez had dropped Matt Stairs throw from right field. A heck of a collision there at home plate. Home run by Finley to begin the inning and now Matthews his first pitch to Colburn is chopped foul Colburn two hits three at bats. Diamondbacks with a two-run lead here in the top half of the seventh inning. Trying to avoid getting swept by the A's in this three-game series after the Diamondbacks swept Houston to begin the road trip. Matthews, one of the guys who came over in the deal for Mark McGuire from St. Louis. He's had a rough go of it lately. He's given up at least one run in his last four outings. That one popped up. In fair territory, the shortstop Tejada drifts out. They got Eric Ludwig, a pitcher. Blake Stein, highly touted young pitcher. And Matthews for Mark McGuire. On the trade deadline, 1997. Jason Conti's had a big day, a single double, scored a run. That's his batting average up near 300. Taking outside to Jason Conti. Conti, two of three, a single double, and lined out hard to Randy Bellardi. The only time he's been retired today is last at bat in the fifth. 2-0 is outside ball three. Travis Lee waits in the on-deck circle. And there's a strike on a 3-0 pitch. And Ramon Hernandez throws the ball into center field, trying to get it back to his right-hander. The delay here is Christensen relays to Tejada. Tejada back into Matthews. A little cutoff and relay practice there between pitches. How do you hold that one? Three-one pitch. And it's strike two. Of course, you never did that. 
Yeah, there were occasions in my career when I used to intentionally throw the ball back at the pitcher's feet. If they consistently bounced pitch after pitch after <laughs> pitch and there was nobody on base, I'd say, let's see how you like it. Slapped into left. Grieve is there. Two away. Well, there are some stories about you, most of them told by Mike Kruko, and things like that you do. Or other times if he was getting knocked around or another pitcher was getting knocked around and you come out to the mound and just lay it out there right on the line. Well, Mike Kruko is a good guy to talk. I mean, he had a tendency the first time he would throw to a catcher, whether it be a rookie catcher or a guy that had come over from a new organization, he wanted to quickly establish that he was the man. You know, he's in charge. So he would shake off pitch after pitch after pitch. And the first time I caught Mike Kruko down in San Diego at the time, Jack Murphy Stadium, he must have shaken me off 20 times in the first inning. The first eight batters of the game reached base. <laughs> so after he gave up the hit to the number eight hitter, I got a ball from the umpire, called timeout. I said, okay, you brain surgeon, see if you can't get the pitcher out. <laughs> Although I didn't call him a brain surgeon. And he didn't shake A little me more off. colorful than that? Uh, slightly. And he didn't shake me off again as long as I caught him the rest of our respective careers. And later on, when Kurt Manwaring, fine catcher for years for the Giants and the Colorado Rockies, the Houston Astros, when Kurt got to the big leagues, his first game, Kruko did the same thing. So I went over after the game, put my arm around Kurt and said, listen, pal, don't feel alone. He's done it to everybody. Throw it at their feet. Yeah. Boy, that is, that's a punishing blow. Solid move, though. <laughs> I like it a lot. Well, of course, you know, anybody that's seen the movie Bull Durham and the veteran catcher Crash Davis as he was catching Nuke Lelouch told the hitters what was coming. Two and two to lead. Did you ever do that? Only one time in a spring training game. Jody Davis was catching for the Chicago Cubs. I was catching for the Giants. The last game of spring training. Jody Davis was hitting 297. I was hitting 296. Check swing and a miss. And we'll get back to this when we return. Middle of the seventh. A home run of the inning by Finley. Diamondbacks lead 4-2. What's on tap brought to you by Miller Lite. Our next game on the Diamondbacks television network. July the 13th, the Rangers come to town as the second half, the mythical second half gets underway. We'll have it for you in Phoenix on three TV and a two sound on KWBA. And Professor Brimley, you were finishing that story. Well, Jody Davis was playing for the Cubs at the time. I was catching for the Giants. It was the final game of the Cactus League schedule. We were both one hit away from batting 300 for the spring. So we made a gentleman's agreement that we would call all fastballs when the other guy was at the plate. So, you know, unless you saw the pitcher shake off, you knew a fastball was coming. Didn't do me any good, but Jody Davis, knowing a fastball was coming, dropped a bunt down the third baseline, beat it out for an infield single, came out of the ball game and finished the spring hitting 301. I finished at 294. Swing and a miss by Ramon Hernandez against Randy Johnson as we open the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, at least you helped out another guy, and that's what it's all about, Bobby. Foul <laughs> back to the screen, 0-2. Yeah, you're supposed to help out guys on your own team, though. You know, I felt kind of bad about it, but the, the respective pitchers in that ball game were both destined for minor league camp the next day. Guys that were not going to make the major league roster, so. Yeah, you might have changed the guy's whole career. Yeah, maybe. Randy has fanned 11. He's walked two, allowed two runs, five hits. And now the 0 2 pitch. Popped up into foul ground, and that one drifting in amongst the fans. It'll stay at 0 and 2. Menachino to foul, then back to the top of the order in Christensen. One, two, three inning here for the big unit would be huge. Check swing and a miss by Hernandez. He had no chance. 12th strikeout of the game now for Randy Johnson. And the reason I say that, 
Keep runners off base for those guys in the middle of this A's lineup, the guys that are most likely to do the damage. We're looking at Randy's latest strikeout. Once again, that sweeping slider. The thing that's so deceptive about that pitch, well, for a lot of reasons it's deceptive, but the ball has a lot of downward movement. It's not a flat slider that stays on the same plane. It starts out many times up above the thighs of the hitter, but the ball breaks down and in. It's not just on one plane as it comes up there to home plate. And as a hitter, you not only have to track the movement coming into you, but also moving from high to low. Saw it right there. It's almost impossible to do. Unless he hangs it. And he does that infrequently. Yeah. I mean, to his credit, when he makes a mistake with the slider, it's usually further down or further inside. He doesn't leave him up over the plate. Menachino helping Johnson there, chasing that pitch up and away from him. One ball and two strikes. Johnson season high in strikeouts, 13. He's done it four times. He's done it five times. This is a big strikeout game for the unit. He had struck out less than 10 in three of his last four starts, four of his last five starts. But he is right on the beam today. Once again, the slider, this time he starts it off the outside corner, the backdoor slider, and just does nip the outside edge. Christensen fouls it back. He's over three. Has struck out twice swinging. Made contact in the fifth and flied out to Conti and right. So Randy now eyeing a season high in strikeouts. That went down and away. One ball and one strike if you're wondering about his career high. 19. He's done it twice. The last time, August 8th of 1997 against the White Sox. If I'm not mistaken, he lost that game. Have to double check that in between innings. That one bounces up there. Check it out for you in between innings here. A little bit low. You know, I was at that game, Tom, and I can't remember if they won or lost. Yeah, we yeah. were doing a Saturday Fox game the next day. He lost the game in 97. Hot smash, and what a pickup over there by Council, and that'll end the inning. One, two, three for Johnson. We go to the eighth. Diamondbacks in front, 4-2. Take a look at our Nissan baseball scoreboard. Cleveland avoids getting swept in the battle for Ohio. 5-3 winners today over Cincinnati. And the Cubs beat the White Sox for a second straight day, 9-6. Boston avoids getting swept by Atlanta. 7-2 the final there. Toronto all over Montreal. Tony Batista knocking in three more runs. A two-run home run by Joe Oliver. The difference so far. The Mariners leading the Dodgers and the Giants eight game winning streak comes to an end. Lined hard in the left center field by Damian Miller and that ball is off the wall. Miller coming to second base. Here's a throw by Grieve and it's not in time. A leadoff double by Damian Miller. Damien with his second hit of the ball game the third time that he's hit the ball right on the button he lined out to right field with the bases loaded back in the third oh, inning singled in the fifth and now his 15th double of the season high off the wall in left field played nicely by Ben Greve but Damian Miller showing that speed sliding in ahead of the throw. So let's see what councils up to the A's defensively believe he's going to bunt he squares and takes a strike just to finish up the, the thought on Randy Johnson twice in his career he struck out 19 batters he beat the White Sox the last time he did it in that 97 season shut them out 
He lost earlier that year, June the 24th against Oakland, a 4-1 decision when he struck out 19, allowed that 538-foot home run to his former college teammate at USC, Mark McGuire. That one bunted foul by Council. Now that was the home run for all those people out there that ask, I wonder what would happen if Randy Johnson threw his best fastball, Mark McGuire took his best swing, how far would it go? Well, in that instance, 538 feet. And that may have been a low estimate. That is a long, long, long home run. Ooh. Good counsel. Getting a word with Brian Butterfield, the third base coach. The corner infielders, at least on the first couple of pitches to counsel, were drawn way in. You wouldn't anticipate him bunting on an 0-2 count right here, but... You never know. Frank Menachino still drawn in ahead of the bag at third base. Giambi drops back at first. Well, they had the 3 2 suicide squeeze on Friday night. We'll see. Takes a swing and lifts a fly ball into right. This will not advance the runner. Stairs throws very well. We've seen that already. One away. So Council fails to move Miller to third base. Activity for the first time. In the Diamondbacks bullpen, the 40-year-old right-hander, originally an Oakland athletic, Mike Morgan beginning to throw. Very odd here at the Coliseum in Oakland. The bullpen mounds are exactly the opposite of the mound on the field. When possible, you always try to have the pitchers throwing to the catcher exactly the way they will when they get out on the mound but it's exactly the opposite here in Oakland pitchers are throwing out toward the outfield wall both in the left field and right field corner while the mound obviously in the middle of the field they're throwing toward the backstop and if you get the wind in here blowing in a certain direction that will change the way your pitches break whether you're throwing them into the wind or with the wind you may leave the bullpen thinking you've got pretty good stuff and go out there to the mound and find out in a hurry that you do not well, you saw Morgan go to the off the mound and take a seat. Been a good day for Tony Womack. Three hits, including a bunt single. He's knocked in a run. The D-backs trying to gain a game on a second-place Giants, who lost earlier today by a run in St. Louis. And a soft liner caught by Velarde. They won't double up Miller. Two away in the inning. And now Morgan is up and at it again. Well, certainly you don't have to worry about the pitcher spot coming to the plate. I mean, sometimes that's why a pitcher will get up and then sit down and then maybe get back up again depending on what happens with your team offensively as the inning progresses and you get closer and closer to that pitcher spot. Jay Bell is 0 for 4. He hit a bullet at the third baseman his last time up the turned into a double play. He looked at strike one. Bell lined out right at Menachino. Womack was at first at the time with a leadoff single in that sixth inning, and he was a step too far away from the bag when the throw was sent Menachino to Giambi. Swing and a miss. Good pitch right there from T.J. Matthews. A yeah, real good change up from Matthews. He's basically known as a sinker slider pitcher. He'll mix in that straight change up on occasion. That tells me he's not going to throw another changeup. He just threw the nastiest changeup in the world to get a swinging strike and then ask for a different baseball. I mean, yeah, I used to guess a lot. I used to try to get any edge I could, but if I saw a pitcher do this, I'm anticipating a breaking ball right here. He's asking for a ball, hoping to get one with bigger seams so he can throw a slider. That's my guess. Well, you're the professor. That's why I hit 248. <laughs> <laughs> 0-2 delivery. Matthews a check of the runner. And 
Well, he came with a fastball. And see, Jay Bell fouled it off. I'd have swung and missed that. And just little things you look for over the course of a ball game, and sometimes. Well, getting back to Mike Kruko once again. He was a guy when he got a new ball back from the umpire and he was anticipating throwing a breaking ball on the next pitch. You would see him rub up that baseball for 30 seconds. Really trying to raise the seams, get his fingernail down into the seams, try to raise him up a little bit to get more action as that ball was spinning through the air, make a little more break on his curveball and slider. 0 oh, 2 to Jay Bell. Fouled out of play again. Sometimes you'll see a pitcher on the mound. He will shake as the catcher gives signs. He will shake his head. Yes. Then no. Then yes again. Well that tells you yes I want to throw that pitch. No I don't want to throw it in that location. Yes that's the location I want. And generally a pitcher will do that on a fastball. Normally you don't change location on a breaking pitch. Only on fastballs. Quite surprised they've challenged Jay Bell twice on an 0-2 count with fastballs out over the plate. I mean, most teams try to put Jay Bell into a situation where he has to swing at a breaking ball or an off-speed pitch off the outside corner of the plate. They've challenged him twice on 0-2 with fastballs out over the plate, a pitch that Jay normally handles very well. After a brief conference out on the mound, we're back at it. Miller at second, two away. Still 0 2 to Bell. And a ground ball down to third. Sides, bobble, spins, throws, and still got Bell, and that'll end the inning. One hit, one left, middle of the eighth. Will Johnson come back out for the inning? Apparently not. Mike Morgan. Miller Lite player of the game, Randy Johnson. Seven innings, five hits, two runs, struck out 13, tying his season high. And he's hoping for help from the bullpen. And there's not been much of that the last two nights here in Oakland. Mike Morgan now on the pitch. Boy, you can only imagine what is going through Mike Morgan's mind when he comes to the mound here in Oakland. June the 11th. 1978 23 seasons ago he came right out of high school and right to the mound in this very ballpark for the Oakland A. Amazing. Randy Bellardi to lead things off 4 2 ball game Diamondbacks lead it one and one on Bellardi. Morgan last worked on Wednesday at Enron Field in Houston gave up a couple of runs in two innings but did pick up his fifth relief win of the year caught by Jay Bell on a line drive by Velarde hard hit ball one away in the inning now Giambi is single to left. Struck out swinging and hit a C to J. Bell to end the fifth inning with Bellardi at second base. And he looks at a strength. Second high, one ball and one strike. Well, there's another veteran. Doug Jones. Been around a long time, boy. 42 years old. That one bounces up there. Pardon me, he just turned 43 years old a couple of weeks ago. The Craig Stadler lookalike. The golfer Craig Stadler. Big walrus mustache. Two on a Giambi. And a line drive into left center caught by Gonzalez. Two balls hit right on a screws by the A's here against Morgan in the eighth. But one at Bell, that one at Gonzo, two away. That's why they put those defenders out there. 
Mike Morgan at this stage of his career is not going to strike out a lot of batters. He relies on his defense to make the plays behind him. Usually you anticipate a lot of ground balls with Morgan throwing that sinker and the slider. Hayes have had a couple of good cuts at him right here, but lined out twice. Almedo signs one of three is singled and scored, and he looks at a strike. Morgan trying to mow him down here in the eighth, protecting a two-run lead. On the inside corner, it's strike two. Good pitch right there. Perfect location right on the inside corner. You could see signs just lock up on that pitch. It was only 85 miles an hour, but it was set up well by that slider off the outside corner before it. There's another slider low on the way. Two and two. down nobody on two balls two strikes on side and a bouncing ball left side and it's off the glove of council into left center field and sky signs will stay put we're going to rule that an infield hit it was going to be a do or die ole sort of play after it came high off the initial first bounce and with signs reaching base Matt Manti gets up down the Diamondbacks bullpen Tough hop there as Council was cutting across to his left, trying to get to a position where he could feel that ball on a short hop. Came up a little higher than he anticipated, got over his glove into left field. Tim Hudson, who started the game two nights ago, he's going to the All Star game as a pitcher. And Hudson is brought on to pinch run for sign. Ben Grieve four for ten with a home run in his career against Mike Morgan. They're going to move Travis Lee behind Tim Hudson over there at first base. Figuring he's not going to attempt a stolen base. Give Travis a little bit more range playing behind the runner. Ball one low and away. You've got a couple of dangerous hitters. Coming up Grieve right now. Who against Johnson today. Was one for two. Bounced to the second. Single to left, scored a run, and then drew a walk his third time up. Ground ball, they had it played perfectly. Womack will beat Hudson to the bag, and that'll end the inning. One hit, one left, end of eight. Diamondbacks still lead by a pair. The Diamondbacks are on the move with Dirks. And here's a look at their upcoming schedule. The all-star break. Over the next three days. And then at Bank One Ballpark. Tickets are available for all three series. The Rangers, the Mariners, led by our good buddy Uncle Lou Pinella. And the St. Louis Cardinals with Mark McGuire. Steve Finley headed to Atlanta. Randy Johnson. Tim Hudson going to Atlanta, possibly to be used as a pinch runner. Jason Giambi, a starter for the American League at first base this year. Jason Isringhausen, the fine closer here for the Oakland A's. 19 saves on the season. And he won't be going to the All-Star game this year, but Doug Jones has been an All-Star in the past, pitching in his 29th ball game. Doug Jones throws a mediocre fastball, a change-up. He'll take a little off his change-up. He'll take a little off of that. And if he thinks you're looking for it, he'll even take a little more off. One of the best change-ups in baseball. Jones 13th season in the major leagues at 43 years old ground ball second base and quickly one away and Doug Jones five times has been an all star most recently in 94 right. Mike Swanson the Diamondbacks media relations director said it's not many times Mike Morgan can pitch in a game at 40 years old and not be the oldest guy to pitch in the game <laughs> he got trumped. 
It really gives you an idea the perseverance of both of these pitchers. We talked about Morgan, who made his professional debut in the major leagues. Doug Jones started his professional career in 1978, the same year as Morgan. Jones did not reach the major leagues until 1982, appeared in four games, went back to the minor leagues, didn't come up again until 86. Down low to Finley. One ball, one strike. Jones had a terrific season last year. Saved 10 games, ERA just over three and a half. Ground ball by Finley into center field. Well, Finley appears to be in some pain. You saw him asking for timeout. He's flexing his left ankle. As he gets down there to first base. Oh, he turned it right there, coming out of the batter's box, rolled over, able to regroup and get on down the first baseline. Take a look at that back leg. As he turns to go to first base, he catches the toe cleat on that left shoe, rolls over on that left ankle a little bit before he's able to move on down the first baseline. Paul Lassard out to have a look along with manager Buck Showalter. like he's trying to wave off the attention of the trainer and the skipper says he's all right he'll stay in the ball game well, those two guys are going to be signing a lot of baseballs tomorrow. first thing you do when you go to an all-star game you walk into the clubhouse and there's about a hundred dozen baseballs laid out and before you can even Take off your street shirt, kick off your shoes, and put on your shower shoes. They make you sit down and autograph baseballs. Each player is allotted a certain number of autograph balls. The balls are given to various charities, and Major League Baseball distributes them in different plays and different ways. They don't tell you that when you get picked to go to an All-Star game. Till after it's all right. <laughs> Yeah, actually, that was uh, some of the most fun I had at the 84 All-Star Game, walking into the clubhouse at Candlestick Park, sitting down at, at about five picnic tables lined up with all the balls in the boxes, plenty of pins laying around. Colvin gone looking to away. I actually have a picture at home of myself sitting next to Goose Gossage, Steve Garvey, Dale Murphy from the Atlanta Braves, Quadell Washington from the Braves, Doc Gooden, several of us sitting there signing baseballs. Swing and a miss by Conti. You look ahead to the bottom of the ninth inning. And Matt Mantide appears will come on to pitch. The A's will send up Tejada Stairs and Ramon Hernandez. Of course, they have Jeremy Giambi sitting on that bench as well. Swing and a miss. And we know what he has done the first two games of this series. And that's what it changes. He's not on that A's bench right now, which certainly tells you he is somewhere taking a few cuts in a batting cage. Swinging a miss and in the end. So, the bottom of the ninth is coming up. It's a 4-2 Diamondbacks lead. on Diamondbacks broadcast receive a gift certificate from Wesley Jewelers Arizona's oldest family owned jewelry store since 1910 visit Wesley at either their two locations in Scottsdale on Fifth Avenue or in Phoenix at the Camelback Esplanade well before we get started on the bottom half of the ninth inning Mike Morgan stays on the mound for the Diamondbacks I'd like to wish my daughter Lacey a very very happy 18th birthday yes indeed Lacey happy birthday I have to do it over the air because I very rarely see her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike Morgan will get the ball as we begin the bottom of the ninth inning, not Matt Manti. And Tejada takes high, ball one. Tejada homering twice last night. 
He has struck out, walked, and lined out hard to Finley in the game today. And he takes high 2 0. Manti continues to crank it up. Diamondbacks with a 4 2 lead here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Tejada, Stairs, and Hernandez do up for the eight. Jeremy Giambi standing bat in hand out in front of the Oakland Athletics dugout. He already has a helmet on, so you know he's getting ready to bat for Ramon Hernandez. There you see him. Three and one to Tejada. Have rallied each of the first two games of this series, and they have a leadoff walk to begin the ninth today. That's going to do it for Morgan. Pitching change immediately made. With Matt Stairs coming up. We'll take a break in the action. Diamondbacks trying to give Johnson his 14th win. Can they hang on?